Mana Spark is a dungeon crawling exploration game that has roguelike elements. But does this game get lost on the ever crowded eShop? Let's take a look. Now before I get started with this review, I just want to let you guys know that there was a pre-launch bug. And you'll see in some other reviews that this bug was so bad that you couldn't save your progress. Now, I want to let you guys know that the developers have reached out and said that this bug is completely fixed. So rest assured this game is ready to go with no bugs reported. Now, Mana Spark is a dungeon crawling game, and you play as a protagonist that wields a bow and arrow as their primary weapon. I've always liked protagonists that do this because it changes up the combat. Instead of using a sword or a gun, you know, going in guns blazing, you have to kind of stay reserved a little bit and kind of keep your distance from enemies. And this game is super difficult, and they say that this game is a cross between Dark Souls and Binding of Isaac, which... I can confirm is pretty much the case. It, it plays a lot like games like Enter the Gungeon and Dead Cells, where you have a game that, you know, dying is part of the game. So if you aren't stubborn like me and you kind of get discouraged fast, you may put this game away. But for me, if you power through it, this game is very rewarding. The game does start you off with a bit of a cutscene, explaining how you are starting sort of a revolution of sorts, kind of taking your land back from these bandits who are kind of abusing the people of your world. Now, I actually did like this as linear as it was. It kind of gave the game a bit of meaning. However, the gameplay is the strength here, and dungeon crawling games have always been, you know, I've always been a fan of these kind of games because it seems like the progression definitely keeps me going in these games, and Mana Spark is no exception. So in these dungeons, you will have two different collectibles. You will find coins and runes in these dungeons. Now the coins kind of, you can spend on temporary boost. So you can shoot two arrows at a time, or your attack is increased, but you're a little bit slower. I really enjoy these, and there are a ton of power-ups. I played this game for a few hours and, and definitely I never saw, you know, similar power-ups in this game. So there are a ton of power-ups. However, the dungeons procedurally generated, they're supposed to be a little on the different side, but I, I was finding that a lot of the rooms were very similar, which was unfortunate. Another thing, uh, kind of knock against this game is that the loading times were quite long. So long, in fact, that it kind of broke up the pacing of this game, which was kind of unfortunate. Now the runes, however, are more of a permanent boost, so you will collect runes throughout the dungeon and those runes will go back to your camp. Now these runes can unlock things like a bear trap or a spider web, which will either you know hurt enemies or slow enemies down. I really enjoyed this quite a bit. You can actually spend some of these runes on edibles, which can actually increase your health or increase the damage that your bow does, so you are after the runes and you know, you're expected to die, so with each power-up that you get, the permanent power-ups, you will get stronger and stronger with each run. In terms of aesthetic of this game, the audio, I think, really shines. The sound effects don't sound cheap at all. You know, this is kind of a budget indie game, but the sound effects are quite good. You know, the, the shots and, and kind of the, the atmosphere of these levels, I think, was a big strength. You know, the soundtracks are not too memorable, but they definitely add to the ambiance and, you know, definitely appropriate for this game. The controls were another thing to get used to. This does use twin stick control, so the left stick will have you controlling your character, and the right stick will have you controlling the reticle of your bow and arrow. It took a little bit time to get used to, and I kind of noticed that the, the right stick kind of jarred the camera, uh, you know, very slightly, almost, almost nauseating at times how fast the camera was moving. But as you play this game, you really do get used to the sensitivity of the camera, and unfortunately it's something that you can't adjust in any kind of menu. Now after playing this game for a while, I noticed that I was getting quite addicted to this game, and I think that dungeon crawling games that kind of give that addictive trait to it, you know, is kind of speaking to how good the game is, and I really did enjoy Mana Spark quite a bit. This was kind of an impulse buy for me, but like I said before, I love characters that use the bow and arrow. If you guys are wondering, this is available right now on the eShop. It is $9.99, and overall, I gotta say, I definitely recommend this game for all of you roguelike fans, uh, dungeon crawling games. This game definitely kept my interest 
for a very long time and I'm excited to continue to play it and build up my character. So there you go guys, that is Mana Spark for the Nintendo Switch. Let me know in the comments section below if you are planning to pick this game up. And like always guys, I will see you in the next video. Have a good one.